Hi everyone, this is DW Berman, and a couple of years ago I made a video about doing a lip sync animation in Character Animator and moving it over into Lightwave. In the interim, uh, Character Animator has gotten much better about uh, editing these things, and they've uh, added in a new feature that uh, will enable us to more easily and readily move the animation along over into uh, Lightwave. The previous trick I did was either render out all of the individual mouth shapes as an image sequence, uh, rather that is uh, do all the character mouth animation work here and export the, the finished result, or a similar thing is to just use a different shade of gray for each different mouth shape and use that to drive a morph in uh, Lightwave to do the different mouth shapes on the mesh rather than just an image sequence. Now with a, uh, a newer tool in uh, Character Animator, it's been in there for a little while, I just haven't messed with it yet, um, this will allow us to uh, just take the data over and not actually have to export anything. So uh, we're going to be looking at that today. So what I have here in my scene is I could record my voice over here, but I have some pre-recorded audio. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the mic there so I'm not affecting that anymore. I'll select my puppet. I have my audio already brought into the timeline. Go up to timeline, compute lip sync from audio. Now previously this, in the first version of uh, Character Animator, that took a lot longer than it does now. Uh, as you can see down here, I have all of my different uh, mouth shapes, my vizemes they call them. Uh, again, previously this was all kind of stacked up and unwieldy, hard to edit. Now it's a lot easier. The day of the event, the crew was drilling between two. If I wanted, if I don't like which ones they picked, I can actually just right click on it and select a different one. If I need to add a, uh, a new one in the middle, I can Alt-click and it'll give me the razor blade and it'll make a cut there and I can change that. And not that that makes any sense. Um, also, I can just click off here and just manually add in my vizemes. And that way I can uh, build in the... I could do my character animation... I mean, I could do my lip syncing manually this way by just adding in the different vizemes where I need them to show up. The day of the event, the crew was drilling between two energized... But the thing that makes this work for our purposes, rather than exporting the entire thing, the, the a, a finished image sequence, I can right-click on this timeline, on this Take 4 audio input thing here, and just copy vizemes for After Effects. What this does is this copies just the data for which mouth is selected at what time, like what second is this particular mouth uh, shape uh, played. This is meant to be used with time remapping where you can tell After Effects to show a certain frame from the source at a certain time on the timeline. So we're not gonna use it like that because uh, I don't have a way to get that data from, I don't have a way to get time remapping from After Effects to Lightwave. However, I can uh, export lights and cameras and stuff like that. So let me just go up to layer, new, and paste and light. I'll select light. Now I'll turn intensity off. It doesn't really matter because I don't think that actually, don't know if that actually transfers over anyway, but we'll turn that off because we don't want it affecting our scene. We're just using it to, as a container for our data. Now if I hit P and I try and I select position and I right click, nope, I don't want to right click. I just want to hit Control v or on the Mac, Command-V, to paste, I'll get this warning. It says, hey, you can't paste temporal data to spatial data. What it's trying to do is I'm trying to paste one channel of information into something that is currently set to have three channels of information. In lightwave terms, I'm trying to paste in a scalar value into a vector, uh, a vector slot. What I can do, though, is I can right-click on the position and separate dimensions. Now in the X position, eh, I'll make it the Y position. In the Y position, I'll select that and hit paste again, Command V, Control V. Uh, and with these still selected, I'm gonna right click on them and I'm gonna click toggle hold keyframe. What this does, this makes sure it snaps from one keyframe to the other, it doesn't go between them. In Lightwave, this is our step input instead of our, our uh, linear or Bezier input. Uh, so now we have our data in here. Let's go up to, let's turn Lightwave on for one thing. We'll start up Lightwave. And here we are in our scene. I'm going to go back to After Effects. 
and I have my plugin already installed that comes with Lightwave. You need to put it in the plugins directory of After Effects. Send selected layers to Lightwave 3D. And there we go. We have our scene in Lightwave with a bunch of keyframes. And this is our position. If you notice our position on our timeline over here on the Y is playing. Now it's negative values, so that's not really helpful for us, but we'll deal with that. Let's bring in some geometry. I'll click load. I'll bring in my object with the morphs because this is the cool one. I'll rotate it around. There we can see it. I'll move it up so it's out of the grid just for our own sake. I'll move in closer. So here's our geometry. If I click on properties, this is Lightwave 2018, by the way. If I click on uh, nodal displacement, I want to check that on. I'll make subdivisions come after that. So what I have here is an object that has uh, different morphs that correspond to the different Vizim shapes uh, that are used in Character Animator. So if I zoom in here, you can see we have these are the different Vizims. If I double click on the puppet, you can see over here in our list we have neutral, smile, surprised. Uh, smile and surprised uh, don't have a corresponding thing in the uh, calculate lip sync from scene audio. These are uh, covered by the camera. You know, these will react to what is on camera, not what's on in the audio track. But these other ones, A, uh, D, E, F, L, M, O, R, S, A, uh, and W. These are all the uh, the Vizims that we need uh, corresponding ones to in our um, morphs. Don't actually have to be named the same, uh, but naming them the same makes it uh, simpler. So here's my object. If I click on morphing, am I on the right object? Yep, I'm on the right. Okay, never mind. We'll just go to the nodal displacement. I have already added in these morph maps here, and I've renamed them. I did that by going over here, typing in MO for morph. So that gets us to our vertex map. And this is what it normally looks like, morph map. I can click on this and select which morph map to use. We got D, E. See, these are the morph maps we made. And to rename this, we'll just make sure it's highlighted and that this window is active and just hit R and that will let us rename it. So I've already done that for all of these. I still need to go through and do that to select them. So um, yeah, why don't we just build this out? So. What we have over here is a light that we imported from After Effects. And this light is moving on the Y axis, which is what the Y axis is the one we want to look at. So let's do item info. Let's see item info. Double click on this and I'll select my light, in which case is spotlight one. I should probably name it something more uh, relevant, but uh, that's what we got. I'm going to use my uh, picker here the the logic probe is that what they call it i don't know it with that turned on we can actually mouse over these things and we can see the values uh, i want to go to position you can see the y is at zero on that frame and on this frame here the y is at that other number <laughs> i don't know how to read those because uh not a math guy but you notice they're all negative so we're gonna have to take care of that too so uh let's First of all, let's do a vector scalar. This is, I'm doing it a little differently than I did it in the test I made earlier. So let's do a vector scalar, and we're going to plug the position into that, and we're going to select the Y channel because we just want the Y channel. So now we have our scalar value there, and you notice it's, it's not right. <laughs> so let's go to Multiply. And uh, we'll plug A in, uh, the out of that into the A. And for the B, we're going to do negative 100 because we noticed it was a decimal. We want it to be an um, a, 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 a integer. That's what we want. We want it to be an integer. So instead of that, yeah, now we have 9 and six. I'm not sure why we're getting some of these other ones in there. But okay. So now we should have our 
basically at whole numbers. We're pretty close to it anyway. I suppose I can use a something to round that out or up. Uh, but what we need to do now is we need to use this to pick which of these to show as far as the morph goes. This is going to be like a, a clay animation thing or a stop frame animation where you're replacing the mouth only there's no transitions between the different poses, so we're pretty crude on our number of mouth shapes, but that's what we have to work with in this technique. Um, I'm going to use a gradient, because I like gradients and I know this works. We might be able to build it with a logic tree of some kind. Uh, let's see, going to plug that into displacement, the color out into displacement. going to double click this, and I'm going to add a bunch of keys. So let's see, we have zero for neutral, and for one, we will have, uh, this will be our ah, uh, and this will be our, well, we just need to make a bunch of these. Eight, nine, 10, 11, we'll put 11 at 11, and distribute keys, that should, yep. Cool, that actually worked. Put them all right where I want them to be. Now starting at the top, I'm going to click Show Output. You'll notice that the panel on the right is expanding. That gives us a place to plug in our... Nice thing with this technique over the old one is that I don't have to render out a whole image sequence. I just need to uh, make adjustments to the character animator and then run that through After Effects and then update the After Effects one into Lightwave. So it's still uh, more more of a step than I want it to do, but I uh, want it to make, but whatever. Oh, let me copy this one and paste it, and we'll make this the neutral one. Neutral. Oh, I don't have a neutral, so it's uh, none. If I could type... Okay, so that'll go in our one position, which is at zero. Two, three. I have not actually selected the morph maps on these yet, so. Uh, All right, that should be about set up. So let's hit play and see what we got. Nothing. Did I not plug something in? I did not plug the output of this, which you can see changing, into the input. There we go. Now we have our mouth moving. Of course, you can't hear any audio, so that doesn't really mean much. So let's go back to our character animator project back to the record tab I'm going to zoom out and delete the audio we have or the Vizim animation and make sure that this is at the very beginning and then I can calculate this again and this is how quickly it is how quickly you can update something in this uh, workflow so I have the new Vizims in there. I can edit them however I need to edit them. Right click on it, copy for After Effects, go to the After Effects. I'm just gonna click this stopwatch to delete those. Make sure my time indicator is at the beginning. And Control or Command V to paste. Right click, toggle hold keyframes. And export to Lightwave. And now I can go to my scene editor and import that same audio. Hello, scene editor, where are you? Scene editor, audio, load audio. And where do I have that audio? Believe it is in VO stuff. Samples, auditions. 
and you can see it through there there's audio there i can hit play I'm installing a drilled shaft foundation on a transmission line project an aldridge drilling team was involved in a major safety incident the day of the event the crew was drilling between two so energized 96 kilovolt if you uh, want to make a change in the timing of these things you can and then you just go through that little process again now of course um there the, this would be an easily scriptable thing if you know how to script because really all you're getting when you're copying this is you're getting a little text file if i open this up in notepad let's say notepad bring this over here and paste paste okay let's copy that again copy and then paste this is all you're getting you're getting a okay here's the uh the second i guess or maybe it's the frame and here's the uh the value for the vizim or which which one to show so that's really all it is uh, i'm sure there's uh somebody who's good with coding who could easily make a window that pops up in uh light wave and you just paste that into it and it'll parse it into uh a envelope that you could use pretty easily and not have to go through the after effects interim step but even with the after effects interim step it's step it's not that uh, difficult it doesn't take that long it's just a couple extra steps uh, this can also work uh, with images so um, there's probably a really easy way to make it work with uh, say like have all of your mouth shapes on one image and just you know change the uv coordinates based on which one is uh, which Vizim is selected, but you just like we have here with these morph targets, if you just replace these with images, uh, you would have the same type of setup, but with a image map instead of a morph target. So let's uh, let's load up a object where I did that. So that would be this one, and hopefully I save the image on it. Uh, looks like maybe not. Crud. Okay, well, let's, uh, let me try loading the other object, because, nope, maybe, we just need to go to surface preview, not surface preview, just VPR. Okay, yeah, it was there. My bad. We just didn't have it on the OpenGL. So there we go. It's the same same type of setup. Let's uh, just so I can show you that. Here's the node graph for that. It looks a little more complicated because the icons are bigger, but still we have the input. We we have this. Uh, in this case, I multiplied it in the vector. So now it's negative 100 on the y, and the z others are zeroed out, and then it gets converted to a scalar. So that step doesn't matter which order you do it in, but we do need to scale it to the correct size and uh, the correct, whether it's positive or negative, I guess. And then here we just have our different mouth shape images. And you of course, could, of course, swap these out too with different artwork if you wanted to. And that runs into the gradient, which runs into the color. So it's pretty much just going on top of this. And that is the basic setup for it. It's uh, not that complicated. It's a little easier to manage than the old one. It's not as clever as having different values of light and taking that value of light and cha changing the morph based on that. But this works out of the box without any plugins. I don't remember if the old one needed plugins or not. But uh, yeah, here you go. I hope you found this uh, educational, enjoyable, enlightening, helpful in any way. Um, if so, thumbs up the video, please. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, thanks for watching.